Hello, in this presentation I will talk about robotic tools used in many of robotic arms. The aims of the presentation is to know on the one hand the type of robotic tools that can be attached to a robot flange to perform a specific task or functionality. The idea is to get familiar with robotic tooling systems such as grippers, hands, suction caps, electromagnets, welding and pitting guns, among others. Finally, I will also mention about tool changers that will allow a robot to work with multiple tools or to work uh, on the same part with different tools. Well, in many manufacturing and assembling processes in which we use robots, the robot tool plays a fundamental role. Obviously, the type of tool that we will use that will depend on the operation that we need to carry out on or to work on a specific part or component. Here I made a classification of tools based on the kind of uh, tasks that they can uh, carry out. For instance, such as operations such as manipulation, extraction, or in this case union, and then I classify other type of tools as just simply others. So within manipulation tools we typically find uh, grippers, hands, suction caps, electromagnets and even tools with some adhesive materials to manipulate more complex objects. Uh, if we have uh, to carry some kind of material extraction operation then we, we might need to drill or cut or maybe to mile some apart and this will be done with the extraction tools. And finally, uh, some operations they require uh, to join two pieces together. Uh, for that case, we can use uh, arc welding, uh, spot welding, or even gluing tools. And finally, there are other tools such as uh, that allow us to paint or polish a specific part. Well, here I show some gripper examples with two, three, and four fingers, and also a robotic hand. Grippers are a very common element that we use if we need to pick and place a specific part anywhere. Robotic hands are typically found in humanoid robots rather than industrial robots. Anyway, you might find uh, some manipulator robots that include a robotic hand. Two-finger grippers are usually very simple and obviously more affordable with the main inconvenience that the gripping uh, it's performing only using two gripping points and therefore not all type of parts can be handled with this type of gripper. On the contrary, grippers with three or four uh, fingers are more dexterous and they can firmly uh, hold the vast majority of objects. Sometimes these grippers are also known as robotic hands, as I said. Obviously, the more, the more complex a gripper is, uh, the more flexible it is too. But then we need to perform a, a more complex control or um, usually it's more expensive. How uh, to grip an object? Uh, it's a well-known problem in robotics, but this is beyond the scope of this course. In, uh, and obviously in this presentation. In most uh, cases, grippers include some force or contact sensors that sense the pressure that we exert to a specific part in order to avoid to damage it. A very common tool in many uh, robot, uh, is, uh, or many robots we can find is uh, suction caps, particularly those that must perform a quick pick-and-place operations such as the case of parallel robots or scatter robots. Since um, if the part uh, or the part that we need to work with uh, allows it, then we can use this kind of uh, tool in order to uh, attack uh, the, let's say, the gripping from uh, the top. Uh, this is, uh, or this is uh, because these tools uh, are based on the Venturi effect and when desired, they generate an, a force that can be controlled with just a simple relay. Some robots also include electromagnets to perform a similar function, but in this case uh, to hold metallic objects. Finally, we can find some adhesive 
uh, sponges to pick up delicate or complex objects with a very similar functionality to the previous ones but in this case uh, adhesive tools usually they lose their adhesive property over time so they require more maintenance than the previous ones. To carry out material extraction operations we have all kind of tools that can be attached to a robot. Here I have just included uh, images of some of them uh, but obviously there are many other tools. Typically we can find uh, tools for drilling, for mining parts and also for laser cutting or even cutting with water uh, or, or um, an object to a specific shape and they just simply generate in this case a cutting plane. Welding and gluing tools do not directly touch the object. In this case uh, they basically uh, they approach uh, very close to the object but with a small separation distance. Depending on the type of welding operation that we, uh, we are required we can use a spot or an arc welding technique. In a spot welding the robot is positioned at the place we want to join two parts uh, by means of uh, generating a welding spot by applying a current between the ends of the tool that will create the actual union. Uh, in arc welding the robot generates a trajectory, usually generates a trajectory between the profile, the, the, the two parts that we want to join. Some robots uh, have tools that allow uh, to glue uh, the parts instead of welding the parts, as you can see here. Robots that uh, can be used for painting and in this case they use paint spray guns. Um, they usually attack the, the part to, to paint at a certain distance uh, and they have a nozzle uh, depending on the size of this nozzle um, they will cover more area or not. Uh, usually these kind of robots are covered by plastics uh, or with plastics uh, to avoid uh, small particles that are floating in the air to damage the robot. Uh, also we can find some um, polishing uh, tools, uh, for instance uh, the one as, as the one that you can see here on the right. Um, this usually includes a sponge to smooth, uh, make it more compliant, so the forces that we exert to the, the part are um, softer and usually these uh, kind of uh, tools also include a force sensor, as you can see here on the top of the right image this sensor is usually attached to the end effector and measures the force uh, that we exert to the part. Robot can be very versatile but at the same time very expensive. In most of the manufacturing and assembling processes we cannot afford to have multiple robots for each of the single operations that a specific part requires. And in addition moving parts from one robot to another robot it's also uh, uh, or implies a significant additional cost as a, let's say for instance we need to, uh, to use conveyors. So for this uh, reason tool changers are used in robotics. They allow us to use multiple tools uh, in one single uh, robot using a tool warehouse. These tools can change uh, or can be, can be uh, interchange because we have a common interface for coupling different type of tools and this, uh, this tool coupling provides the energy and signal that this specific tool requires. In this case each robot manufacturer uh, has their specific uh, tool coupling and uh, they are not usually standardized so which means that you have to use obviously uh, as well as the tool coupling and the robot coupling from the same manufacturer obviously. And in this video uh, from Shank company we can see an animation of a tool changer. As you can see the system is modular and uh, the user can adapt it to their needs providing various interfaces depending on the tool to be used and specifically the robot here uses a gripper uh, to pick apart and then changes the tool to perform some spot welding and then changes again uh, the gripper and so on.
Uh, we can also see that uh, you, we can use specific tools, let's say, to hold a, a heavy beam, as you can see here. Well, in this presentation I have done a quick summary on robotic tools that we can find in many robotic arms. Thank you very much.